Hey, it's Jaime with Echo Real Estate Advisors. Welcome to the channel that provides actionable content to help your business grow. Don't forget to subscribe as every month I give away one of my Facebook, Google, and YouTube courses away for free as a thank you for being a subscriber. Okay, today we're looking at custom conversions. Now, don't panic. Custom conversion sounds a bit complex, but it really isn't. The first thing you need to know is to make custom conversions work, you have to have a Facebook pixel installed. So that means creating your Facebook pixel, which there's a video on this channel about that, and installing your Facebook pixel. There is also another video in this channel that shows you exactly how to do that. So don't be alarmed there is already training on how to do that. We're not gonna spend too much time in doing that because it takes a little bit of time and I just want to get to the main course of the custom conversions. So what are custom conversions? First, we're gonna look at two definitions that you see on the screen right now. Learn from custom conversions. So see the details of how customers interact with your business, like the price and style of the shoes, they view on your website, app, or in a physical store. That's another way of saying measure what's working and be able to target and see what is actually working as, um, let's see, details of how uh, customers interact with your business like the price and style of the shoes. So you're able to see um, and track what is actually working. You're able to see what actually converted into a sale, into a lead, into whatever you're trying to track. You're gonna get to see that here in a few seconds when we actually create one. Now, what's super cool and makes your business grow exponentially is this second bullet point. Optimize for custom conversions. Use custom conversions to show ads to people who are most likely there it is, most likely to take specific actions. You can use this feature once you've recorded at least 50 conversions for a custom conversion. Really, that's what, really that's the bottleneck for most people. That is the, that's the limiting factor. Sometimes they just aren't consistent enough to get to those 50 conversions, but after those 50 conversions, it really starts to snowball because again, Facebook is looking at people, at getting you people that are most likely to act. And the reason it's doing that is because they're gonna get more of your money. Facebook is wanting you to continue to advertise and Facebook's algorithm is so powerful that they know which people are most likely to act based off of your product, but they also need some input, input from you. So they need to see your product not your product in the sense, but your URL, the uh, the link that's being shown, which we're gonna cover here in a few seconds, in order to optimize that. I'm not covering the share custom conversions too much right now because that's the third party agencies and things that are a little bit beyond where we're wanting to be today. So we're gonna look at the how to actually create the custom conversion which as a reminder, you need that Facebook pixel, no way around it. So if you've been delaying, stop. <laughs> Now's the time to do it. Let's, uh, let's create one. Create custom conversion. All right, so our custom conversion, we're gonna name it Echo Real Estate Advisors Test Custom Conversion. And we don't need a description, but we can, we're just gonna put test. And that's a different pixel for uh, another business that I am no longer a business partner in. All right, so here's our Facebook pixel and you saw that you get to select the different types of pixels. You get, if you've set up different accounts, ad accounts, you can allocate a different pixel to it. So one pixel per ad account, just remember that. And you get to select which pixel you're actually trying to get the custom conversion to track. And over here, you can just leave it at all URL traffic. You can go to standard events, but for our purposes, just use all URL traffic. Make it simple on yourself. And there's three, th three options to choose from when you go into URL. Contains, doesn't contain, or equal. Well, let's let's get a traff, uh, that was another one. Let's redraw this for a second. All right, so here's what we're trying to do. 
Here is our website. This is our home website. We have our Facebook ad. And then they come to our landing page or our website and then we're asking for their name. We're asking for their phone. We're asking for their email in this little block here. A lot of the people, as you know, are gonna land at that page and not do anything. They're not gonna give you their name. They're not gonna give you their phone or anything like that. However, there's a good amount of people that will. In other words, they become a lead. Or if you're selling products or whatever the case may be, very similar concept. So once they provide that information over to you, this is gonna to come to you either into your CRM or into your email or to whatever automation you have. That's gonna be fed to you. Now, dependent on your landing page or how your website is set up, most are gonna have the thank you page. Most are gonna have, hey, thank you for submitting your information, we're gonna be in contact with you, something to that effect. So when we're looking for the URL, and I'll go back to Facebook here in a few seconds, when we're looking for the URL, we're looking for this URL because this is what we're trying to optimize for. Remember back on those two bullet points that we looked at, uh, track and then optimize? This is what we're trying to optimize for. We want more of these people we want more of the people that actually took action, that gave us money or that gave us their information. These are the people that we want. The people that, act, that came here and didn't do anything, well, bye. <laughs> we want more of these people and this is where you need those 50 conversions for it to really take hold. So the more traffic that you can drive here, the more people that are gonna eventually end here, and then at some point, Facebook is gonna get so smart that it's gonna take the 50 conversions that you had here and it's gonna feed you more people that are likely to act and you're gonna see the amount of people that give you their information from right here just skyrocket. Does that make sense? So that's what we're trying to do. This is the URL that we're after. Now, let's go back to Facebook. We wanna, we wanna keep this video brief. It gives you three options. Contains, doesn't contain, or equals. So when the URL, the URL that they're asking for is, if your URL, on that landing page right here is static and you know that it's static, it's not gonna change ever. So if it says echorealestateadvisors.com slash thank you and it'll always say thank you no matter what, then you're okay putting equals. However, if your URL changes and it changes frequently, a lot of landing page softwares, that's what they do. They'll put a uh, .com slash thank you slash one, two, three, four, five, 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 or something like that. Or right after you put dot com slash thank you and then just a bunch of numbers. So that the last snippet of it is constantly changing. Then you don't want to put the entire URL. You only want to put the, um, the URL that's static. So it's going to contain that. So for this example, if we were to, if we were to put, let's just put a, let's, our friends over at Zillow, just for fun. Um, okay, you see that URL here? If there was a number, if that constantly changed after every single submission, after every new lead that you received, you don't wanna take the entire number. You want to not take that. This appears to be static all of the time. I don't know, I'm just using, using this as an example. So take whatever you know is gonna be static at all time, and then put it in contains. So I hope that makes sense. So contains is gonna be what, um, what you know is gonna be there all of the time. You can't put exact, because this won't be exact every single time, unless, I keep going back and forth, I'm sorry. I hope that, that I'm making the point, so I'm just gonna stop drilling down in that, in, that, in that sense. But just know that if you know that it's gonna be static forever, then yes, you're okay using equals. If you don't, then there you go. Now, doesn't contain, this is how you exclude URLs, which is very powerful as well. And just know that this is available to you. You can exclude certain actions as well, and you can continue adding rules and rules and rules so it gets fun just experiment with this and make it work for you
okay? And then you can categorize it. This isn't too important, but if you wanna stay, uh, if you want to stay organized, you can have 100 conversions on Facebook. Very rarely will you get to that many, but it is possible. You want to stay as organized as you can. And if you have a value attributed to every single conversion or every single lead, if you're on the e-commerce world or if you're selling products, then you know generally what it's going to be. But if you're doing sales, unless you know your numbers for every lead that I get, it's going to be 50 bucks or Whatever your numbers end up being, you can add a value here at that point. But for me, I'm just gonna put zero. Oh, there we go. Create, and you have your custom conversion. Well, that's it, folks. That's the value I had for you today. Like, comment, share, and subscribe if I earned it. Outside of that, keep calling your shot and execute daily.